Hey everybody, it's Dave Juno, the Meniere's Disease Warrior. How you all doing? I'm doing really good. Um, you know, I'm finally out of a flare and everything, so I'm doing really good. But today I had had my um, cochlear implant evaluation, um, which was pretty interesting because, you know, yeah, they make sure I'm deaf on this side, right? This is where they want to put it. Um, and yeah, I'm deaf. So then they did somewhat of a hearing test on this side, not as intense as the audiology test. Um, and actually it was kind of better because they didn't have the headphones. She just took the things and put them in there. Um, but the other, the other part of the test is, is that you have to say sentences back. And they have it, you're in a crowded area. And that was hard. Okay, that was really hard. Um, there was some things I just couldn't hear or I couldn't make up, make out, I should say, not make up. Um, but the problem is I'm not getting it yet, okay, because um, Medicare won't pay for it because I'm, I'm just like right there above their threshold. Um, she said I, I need one, um, but with... with um, with Medicare in the United States, they won't pay for it unless you're below a certain area. And, you know, the, to them, it's like, well, you still have some hearing in your right, blah, 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 blah. So now, where do we go from there? So I'm not getting the implant yet. So I'm going to be reevaluated in a year, which is fine. Because she even told me that she was the same audiologist I had um, when I had my audiology test in March and she even told me she goes, your hearing's worse now than it was in March so you're progressively you're progressively losing it so let's reevaluate six months to a year and so I made the appointment for a year but as in every situation there is a ray of sunshine okay and what we're gonna do for now is because Medicare will pay for this, and they've made sure Medicare would pay for it, is I'm going to get the Bicross hearing aids. And if you don't know what that is, okay, I'm deaf on this side, right? So there's a there's a, amplif um, a receiver here that will hear the sounds around that will go to the, the... There's a transmitter here that will hear all the sounds, and there's a receiver here which is my hearing aid, which I could use a hearing aid in this ear anyway, she said, which will send, this, send the sounds from over here to this ear. And so I'll be able to hear everything. And, but I won't be able to tell where the sound's coming from, if it's coming from my left or my right. Um, well, the right I probably would be able to, but the left I won't be able to. So that's the downfall of it. But for now, for a year, to use these Bicross um, implant, um, implants, Bicross hearing aids, fine, I'll do it. I'd rather do that because she had a pair there and she let me try them. And it was like a world of difference. A world of difference. Just with that, I might even just forget the implant and stick with these things if my hearing doesn't, you know, progress lower. Um, just because it, it was... It was, it was amazing because I haven't really been able to pick up sound from this side, okay, at all. I can't. I'm totally deaf from the labradectomy. So now I'm hearing stuff over here. And she's talking and she's not screaming or yet talking loud. She's talking normal and I'm hearing her. I was like, what? Wow. You know, this, I was all excited. So... Yeah, I'm not going to get a cochlear implant right now. I'm going to get reevaluated for it in a year. But I'm going to get those Bicross. And like I said, if those Bicross work out the way I, I, way I hope they do, I might just forget the cochlear. Um, and, and that's because, you know, why go through another surgery when I know, my doctor and I have already talked about this, that I'm going to end up having an uh, emphylactic surgery here decompression here um, anyways so 
you know, we'll just wait and see what happens. But, you know, instead of getting all upset, like, oh, why can't I get up cook the airplane? Oh, my insurance sucks. I'm going to make a phone call. I'm going to call you. Man. You know, because people do that. It's like, why? And I think the reason why I didn't do that, and she even said that, she goes, yeah, a lot of people get upset about it. And you're like, okay, so what are we going to do now? And, she says, and you're like, okay, we'll reevaluate. And um, I'm like, yeah, I'm just a different person. So, you know, I'm, I, you know, it's like, well, what are we going to do? So, you know, yeah, the bi cross, it can benefit from it. And, um, you know, I go for the evaluation on that <laughs> um, August 7th, and I will get them around my birthday, eight, uh, uh, September 13th. So it'll be a nice birthday present for me. Because <laughs> uh, my birthday is the 12th, my granddaughter's is the 13th, and I get them by hearing aids on the 13th. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's, that, there's always a, you know, okay, this isn't going to work. Boom, that's going to work. We'll try this. And that's how you're going to live with Meneas to begin with. You know, either, you know, okay, this didn't work. Boom, try that, see if that works. And like I said, if the bicross works and, it's in a, and I'm comfortable with it and it's fine, I just might keep them and that's it. You know, so we'll go from there and see what happens. But for now, at least for a year, if not sooner, because she did say, well, call back if you really notice that hearing going and we'll redo the reevaluation again and you'll probably qualify. So I might have to up it a little bit, but for now, that's the way it is, and I'm thrilled with it. Um, at this point, um, you know, if you're interested in cochlear implant, I would talk to your doctor about it. I, from what I hear, it's it's a wonderful thing. Um, but also, what she told me too was that over time, because the nerves aren't being used, they kind of die a little bit. They die. So when they put the cochlear implant in, they re they they're, they're actually they put it in, the cochlear implant is actually starting to try to act, is activating these nerves again. Okay, and that sometimes takes time as well. And I remember um, when I had nerve surgery done on my elbow here, I had all the nerve surgery done, and that doctor told me that um, it would take a year before the ulnar nerve will come back. And it took two years actually. Um, I had no feeling in these two fingers because um, this is cubital, cubital, and this is um, the carpal tunnel. This is carpal tunnel. These two fingers are carpal tunnel. These two fingers are a cu cubital, which is an ulnar nerve. So, yeah, nerves can regenerate, so they take a while. So she said that could take a while too, where you've been deaf for five years. So that's something you know you want to understand because we don't want you to freak out if you're not getting hearing back right away. So, yeah, that's the story for now. If things change, I will, I will update you. Believe me. If I notice more hearing is going, and they're going to get me in for another eval, and they're going to go ahead with a coke there, I'll let you know. Um, and I'll actually do updates about the bicross hearing aids. I'm just re really starting to research them now. And um, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Have a great day. Take care.